بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيهاف توفيق تو Continue our study of Kashful Murad. And inshallah, today I want to finish the discussion about qualities or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the next section, which is about actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would start, which has lots of good discussions about Husnul Qub, about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not do immoral things, about the fact that Allah's actions have purpose, and uh, also uh, about Qadha and Qadar, about guidance and misguidance, about the fact that Allah would not punish the children, about goodness of taklif or obligation. So these are very important topics that inshallah come in the next uh, section. So inshallah, if today we try to finish the discussion about the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-mas'alatul hadiyata, al-mas'alatul hadiyata wal ashroon fi baqis sifat. Problem 21 about other attributes. So for all the remaining attributes, we have one title and all of them under this masala. But then Khaja mentions them uh, one by one under this mas one single masala. Qala ba'ala thubutil jud. Wujubul wujud, necessity of being, indicates many things. We have already mentioned many things. One of them is that Allah is generous. He has jud. He has generosity. Allah mehilli rahmatullah alayhi says, Aqulu hadha atfun ala qawlihi ala sarmadiyyatih. We said wujubul wujud yadullu ala sarmadiyyatihi. So this is added to that. Means wujubul wujud also indicate generosity. Ay anna wujubal wujud yadullu ala sarmadiyyatihi wa ala thubutil jud. Indicates the fact that Allah has no beginning and no end, Sarmadiyya, and also he, there is generosity in him. What is Jud? What do Mutakallameen, theologians, mean by Jud or generosity? Wa'alam anna al Jud, it's a very good definition. I'm sure you have it in mind, but you know they have articulated it. Very well and clearly. An al jud huwa ifadatu ma yan baghi lil mustafid min ghayr istaadatin min. Jud means to give, to benefit, ifada. Ifada means to give. Mustafid is the one who receives. You know, in Muniyatul Murid, the title of the book is Fi Adab al Mufid wal Mustafid. In that context, Mufid is teacher because he is benefiting the students. Mustafid, the one who benefits from the teacher, is the student. So, Mustafid means the one who does istifada, I mean, who makes benefit of someone or something. So, generosity is Efadatu. To give, to benefit. 
Mayan Bagil Mustafid. What is suitable? What is good to give to benefit? What is good? What is suitable to the one who is going to benefit to beneficiary? So if I give something to beneficiary which is not Yanbagi, which is not, you know, uh, wisely expected, then this is not generosity. I, if I give to, for example, a little child some gold, some silver, it's not Jude. Or if I give a person who can deal with few thousand dollars, for example, if I give him millions of dollars and then he will lose his orientation in life <laughs> because of that, for example, uh, he doesn't know how to deal with this money. His life will be damaged. This is not Jude. Jude is to give to the beneficiary what is yanbari, what is good, what is suitable, men غير men without asking for return from the beneficiary. استعاضة comes from ibad. Ibad means return. Jude is without expectation. If I give something and say you have to do this for me or you have to pay me back, this is not Jude. So, wajib al-wujud is jawad, has Jude, is generous. In which sense? In the sense that he gives to contingent beings whatever suits them and he is not expecting any return. Actually, they don't have anything to give him back. What can they give him back? They Whatever they have is from him. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah doesn't expect any sustenance from us. Allah doesn't expect us to feed him. He is the Razzaq. He is the giving of, giver of sustenance. So, Whatever he gives is without expecting any return. وَإِنَّهُ تَعَالَى قَدْ أَفَادَ الْوُجُودَ الَّذِي يَنْبَغِي لِلْمُمْكِنَاتِ مِنْ غَيْرَ أَنْ يَسْتَعِيضَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given wujud existence. Because we said Jude is to give Mayan Bagi. Allah has given existence, and anything Allah has given is in the form of existence, yeah? Because it's not that your wujud is something, and then your knowledge, your health, and memory is something else. Under wujud, everything comes, everything is part of the wujud, and this is why Mu'tal wujud. Is the giver of everything else. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given wujud alladhi yanbaghi lil mumkinat, which is uh, expected, which is suitable for mumkinat to every contingent being. What type of wujud is given? The wujud that is suitable for mahiya of that thing, for the capacity that they have and wujud is something also good because wujud is actually the source of goodness and non-existence shar is uh, any bad thing goes to shar to non-existence so Allah has benefited has given wujud existence which is suitable which is expected for every contingent being Without من غير without and يستعيذ منها شيئا without asking this ممكنات to give him any return من صفة حقيقية أو إضافية Allah doesn't 
ask them to give him anything, whether it is a real quality or a relational quality. You know, sometimes, for example, we, we say, give me power. Power is without relation, but knowledge always belongs to ma'loom, to what is known. Allah doesn't want anything like this or like that from us. He doesn't want anything from us. فَهُوَ جَوَادٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. وَجَمَاعَةُ awail. Some of the early uh, thinkers, they said that someone who is jawad, who is generous, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has no purpose, no qarad. Because if you have any purpose, means you are benefiting yourself from this. You want to serve your purpose. Because for them to have purpose means you have interest and you want to serve your own interest. But as we will say, inshallah, later, and we had it also in Baba Hadi Ash, we say Allah has purpose because he's wise. But the purpose is not to benefit himself. Don't get it wrong. Don't think to have purpose means you have need and you have interest for yourself. You want to meet your own desires and needs. No. But still he has purpose. What is his purpose? Is to give us what can help us, what can grow us, and so on and so forth. Jama'atul awail nafaw al gharad an al jawad. They have denied gharad from the one who is generous. It means that the one who is generous should not have any purpose in his action. This is false. And its explanation will come later when we talk about justice. The next thing is Walmulk. Qala Khaj Rahmatullah Alai said, Wal Mulk means Vujubul Vujud Yadullah Alal Mulk. The, the necessity of being indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mulk. Mulk means ownership, possession, kingdom. Allah is Malik. Malak means angel. Malakun Muqarrab means angels which are Muqarrab. An angel who is Muqarrab, we say Malakun Muqarrab. But Malik means king. Malik Yawmuddin or Malik Yawmuddin. There are two recitations. Malik, the one who has mulk. So, Aqul, Allah Mahalli says, Wujubul Wujud. يَدُلُّ عَلَى كَوْنِهِ تَعَالَى مَلِكًا لَأَنَّهُ غَنِيٌ عَنِ الْغَائِرِ فِي ذَاتِهِ Necessity of being indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is malik. Allah is the king, the one who has kingdom. Because he owns and runs and gives everyone everything. And he doesn't need anyone. Whatever he has is are from himself, and he gives to others what they have. لَأَنَّهُ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْغَيْرِ Allah is free from need. He's rich. He doesn't need any غير, anyone other than himself. فِي ذَاتِهِ In his essence, he doesn't need anyone. وَالصِّفَاتِهِ And in his qualities. Sifatihi al-haqiqiyyati al-mutlaqa Whether these sifat are real sifat which are without relation to anyone else like life, like power or it can be al-haqiqiyyati al-mustalzimati lil-idhafa real qualities of Allah but which need relation like knowledge of Allah, even knowledge in his essence, needs ma'loom. Ma'loom can be himself, can be his creatures. 
none of them need existence of anyone else because Allah can know us even before we exist yes sifat fi'liye the qualities of action they need two sides one is Allah the other side may come later therefore those sifat come later for example knowledge as a quality of action or forgiveness is a quality of action giving sustenance is a quality of action needs two sides when the other side is not there this quality cannot be abstracted by mind but they don't mean that uh, that there has been any change in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have discussed this many times in aqaid in um, Al-Muzash Aqaid in Babu Hadi Ashar in Islamic belief system we have discussed Sifat Fail and how they are changeable but without Allah being subject to any change so he is Ghaniyun an al Ghair he doesn't need anything else whether it be in his essence or real actions real uh, qualities real Sifat وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ مُفْتَقِرٌ إِلَيْهِ Everything else needs him. لَأَنَّ كُلَّ مَا عَدَاهُ مُمْكِنٌ Everything other than Allah is contingent. أَنَّ مَا يُوجَدُ بِسَبَبِهِ They only exist. أَنَّ مَا يُوجَدُ Everything else only exists بِسَبَبِهِ Because of Allah. وَلَهُ ذَاتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And for God is essence of everything. Means they belong to Him. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ Everything is for Him. Why? لَأَنَّهُ مَمْلُوكٌ لَهُ Because everything is owned by Him. Actually, the way we are owned by Allah is real. You know, I own a house, a car, books. This is not real ownership. I can die and these things still exist. I may have, you know, forgetfulness. <laughs> they still can exist. Real ownership is the ownership that comes between cause and effect. For example, ownership that you have over your qualities ownership that you have over for example your ideas and images in mind these are real or ownership of allah over everything that he created which is the maximum level of ownership so because everything is owned by him مُفْتَقِرٌ إِلَيْهِ فِي تَحَقُّقِ ذَاتِهِ Everything for materialization, for realization of its essence needs him. Essence without existence, of course, has no uh, need for creator. Essence without means mahiyya. Mahiyya can be ma'dum. For example, we have essence of dinosaur. Mahiyya of dinosaur is mahiyya of dinosaur. But existence of it needs creator. If you remember, uh, we had this uh, in philosophy courses. We said, uh, philosophers say, مَا جَعْلَ اللَّهُ الْمِشْمِشَةَ مِشْمِشَةً بَلْ أَوْجَدَهَا Allah has not made apricot, apricot, but, but Allah created it. What does it mean? It means that mahiyat are mahiyat. These are just concepts two is two three is three but to have existence for this mahiyat need cause but just to have them in the realm of concepts they don't need any cause because they don't have reality like dinosaur doesn't exist now okay so it doesn't need any cause but if it exists if this essence is realizing materializing then it needs the cause so everything is owned by god needs him for realization so allah is malik 
لأن الملك هو المستجمع لهذه الصفات الثلاث because ملك is the one who has these three qualities together what are these three qualities? one he has no need to anything so he is free غني عن الغير one two everything else needs him three everything else is owned by him so he is malak he doesn't need anything everything needs him everything is owned by him whoever has these three qualities is malak in the best sense the next thing is what tamam wafawqahu وجوب الوجود يدل على التمام وفوقه من فوق التمام اللام سيز أقول وجوب الوجود يدل على كونه تعالى تاما وفوق التمام الله has تمام means he is تام means he is complete تمام means completion تام means complete if you remember in discussions about Imama, we said that in Arabic there is a difference between Kamal and Tamam. Al Yom Akmal to Lakum Dinakum wa Atmam to Alaikum Naamati. Kamal is perfection, Tamam is completion. A very famous example is when you make a house, you are building a house. When you put doors windows ceilings electricity pipes everything this house is complete but still you cannot live there you need to furnish it when you furnish it in the good way that you love it you are comfortable there heating everything is fine then it is perfect but without furniture and heating and lighting is not Kamel. It's Tam, but not Kamel. So there's a difference between Tamam and Kamal. But what is interesting is opposite to Tamam is Naqs. Opposite to Kamal is also Naqs. So you have to understand from the context whether Naqs is here meant as not being complete, means being incomplete or being imperfect. You have to understand from the context, from other evidence. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tamam, or you can say he is tam. He has completion, or you can say he is complete, and actually fawq at tamam, and he is above completion. Amma kawnuhu tamman. Why he is Tom, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and as we said in philosophy and also here whatever is possible to exist for wajibul wujud must exist everything that is possible any matter of perfection which is possible must be there Wajibul wujud bizzat. This is the rule in philosophy. Wajibul wujud bizzat. Wajibun min jami'il jihad. If something is wajib in essence, then it is wajib in everything. Because there cannot be any perfection which he is waiting to gain. There is no halatul intidhar. There is no waiting condition in wajibul wujud. If something is good, he has it. If something is not good, he doesn't have it. That's it. There is no gradual process of completion or growing or improving in wajibul wujud. Because according to what salaf is was what we said in the past, uh, he is one. Wajibun. 
He is necessary. Min kull jaha. From every aspect, he is necessary. Yam tana'u taghayyuruhu wa anfi'aluhu wa tajaddudu shay'in lahu. It's impossible. Imtina'a means not being possible. Mumtana means impossible. Muhar. It's impossible to change. He never changes. Enfa'aluhu. It's impossible that he would be admitting some changes from outside. He is not passive. He is not munfa'il. Means he's not affected. And it is impossible that something happens newly for him. Tajaddudu shay'an lahu. Nothing can happen as a new thing for him. فَكُلُّ مَا مِنْ شَأْنِهِ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ فَهُوَ حَاصِلٌ لَهُ بِالْفِعْلِ Everything that can be for him is there, is حاصل, is actual. So he is calm, he is complete. There is no waiting for him. There is nothing he lacks and he is going to gain it in future. But we said وَفَوْقَهُ He is even more وَأَمَّا كَوْنَهُ فَوْقَ التَّمَامِ فَلَأَنَّ مَا حَسَلَ لِغَيْرِهِ مِنَ الْكَمَالَاتِ فَهُوَ مِنْهُ مُسْتَفَادُ because you know when we say complete, complete doesn't necessarily mean absolutely perfect. Imagine you have an animal, you have a plant, you have a wood. When they reach their peak, they are complete. Means there is nothing more to come. But does it mean that they are perfect? They have all kamalat, all perfections in the world? No. So Allah has everything that he can have. So there is no growth needed. Plus, not only he is complete, he has every perfection that is there in the world because they all come from him. So we are talking about a complete and perfect. Actually, it's only Allah who is perfect. Nothing else is really perfect because nothing else has all the perfections. But him being above completion, because any perfections that have happened for others are taken from him. So he has all the perfections that are there. So he is not just complete. As I told you, you can have a complete horse. You can have a complete rose flower. You can have a complete, I don't know, um, water, for example. But doesn't mean that they are perfect. They have perfections of everything. No. But Allah is complete and has perfection of everything. The next thing. One of the very important discussions in Islamic thought is Al Haq. If you remember, in Akhlaq series in the Hosa, for several sessions, we talked about truthfulness. And we said that how Islamic system, Quranic system, is based on the truth. Allah is Al-Haq. Al-Haq. He created the skies and the earth. Al-Haq. He runs everything. Al-Haq. He sends the prophets. Al-Haq. He sent down the Quran. Al-Haq. Al-Haq anzalna. Al-Haq nazal. Everything must be Al-Haq. And we should also do things Al-Haq. Therefore, several sessions we talked about this. Several years before that, in the course on indicators of piety, also I had argued that the basis of Islamic 
understanding of taqwa is truthfulness, commitment to haq. So haq is very important. Here we have a very brief discussion. Wujub, Allah Mahalli says, Wujub al Wujud Yadullu ala Thubut al Haqiyat al Lahu Ta'ala. Necessity of being indicates that Haqiyah is there for him. Haqiyah means to be true, to be real. Here, uh, real and true are very similar, almost the same. Because haq means something which is real. Wa'lam. Allah mehilli rahmatullah alayhi says, Wa'lam. Be aware. Be informed. Anna al haqqa yuqalu lissabite mutlaqa wa sabite daima. Al haq with alif and lam. When we say something is al haq, not just haqqun. Al haq means something which is real forever. Absolutely. You know, me and you are in a sense haq, means we are real. But we are not al haq. Al haq is the one which exists which is real absolutely and forever which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the one that without any condition without any limits exists وَيُغَالُ عَلَى حَالِ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعِقْدِ بِالنِّسْبَةِ إِلَى الْمَقُولِ وَالْمُعْتَقَدِ إِذَا كَانَ مُطَابِقًا وَهُوَ الصَّادِقُ أَيْضًا Sometimes haq is used for what is said for a Maqul. Qawl means to say, to speak. And mu'taqad. What? I'taqad. Aqidah means something that is like a tie in the heart. It's firm. So, we say this word or this aqidah, this belief is haq. What does it mean? إِذَا كَانَ مُطَابِقًا if it corresponds to the reality. You know, the, there are different theories about uh, haq or said about truth. The best theory, according to Muslim philosophers, is what in the West they call theory of correspondence. It means a true proposition is the one that corresponds to the objective reality. So, an opinion a belief or a word a saying a statement if they correspond to reality they are haq or we can also say sadiq sadiq we can say also they are sadiq if we say this word this statement we can say it is sadiq if we are talking about what they refer to we can say haq so, وَهُوَ الصَّادِقُ أَيْذًا لَكِنْ بِاعْتِبَارِ نِسْبَةِ الْقَوْلِ وَالْإِغْدُ وَالْعَقْدِ إِلَيْهِ But this عَقْد is not contract, so this is why I say إِغْد, so that it becomes more clear. So, with uh, uh, relation, in relation or with regards to uh, the thing that they correspond to, we can say they are sadiq, means they are true. Wallahu ta'ala wajibu thubut wa dawam. After saying haq is a thabitu mutlaqan wa thabitu dawaman, we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wajibu thubut. Allah is necessarily existing and also Allah is necessarily eternal. 
he has dawam enduring he's enduring Allah would not admit non-existence he would never stop existing or cease existing Allah's essence Allah's essence please remember Allah's essence is different from our essence our essence is our mahiyya doesn't necessarily mean that we exist but Allah's essence is his existence Allah's essence is always real it's different from us so Allah's essence is more real or has more subut than anything else me you everything that we see around us we are haq at the moment we are haq at the moment we are real but Allah is more haq than us this is why we call him al haq but we are haq this is haqqun that is haqqun this book is haq that desk is haq but Allah is al haq because he is real forever without any condition and any other reality also comes from him he is the one that gives to anything that exists means everything that has a reality this reality comes from him okay please bear with me a few minutes uh, we want to inshallah finish uh, the discussion about safat Khair means good. Wujub al wujud yadullu ala thubut wasf al khayriya lillah ta'ala. Necessity of being also indicates that Allah has the quality of khair. Khayriya means to be khair, to be good. La'anna al khair ibaratun an al wujud. Khair is wujud. We have a discussion in you know divine justice we talked about this uh, in aqaid when we talk about problems in the world you know we talk about this that what is sharr there are lots of discussions here but a very important discussion in philosophy is that sharr is non-existence or something which is related to non-existence for example illness what is illness lack of health what is poverty? Lack of qana, rich. Any shar is adami. Either it's uh, non-existence absolutely or non-existence for something which exists. We can discuss this later, inshallah. But briefly, all the khairat are from wujud. And nothing bad is created. If there is anything bad, it's through the relations and because of incomplete uh, existence. So, لَأَنَّ الْخَيْرَ إِبَارَةٌ عَنِ الْوُجُودِ خَيْرَ consists in existence. وَالشَّرَ إِبَارَةٌ What is شَرَ? What is the uh, bad, the evil? And كَأَدَمْ كَمَالِ الشَّيْءِ من حيث هو مستحق له. When a perfection does not exist for something that deserves that perfection. For example, my body needs health. If that health is not there, this is illness. But my health is not needed by wall. So we cannot say, you know, lack of health is share for the wall. Or knowledge for a human being, if it doesn't exist, is sharr. But for an animal, knowledge is not needed. So, Adam kamal shay min haysu huwa mustahakun lah or mustahakun lah. If you say mustahakun, means that perfection is needed or is deserved. If we say mustahakun, means this thing deserves that perfection. 
و واجب الوجود یستحیل و ان یعدم عنه و یعدم عنه شیء من الكمالات واجب الوجود کنات میس اینی کمال سو هی از خیر در از نو اگنورس نعوذ بالله نو پاورتی نو ایلنس نو کروالتی nothing bad anything bad that you can imagine would have no way to reach him فلا يتطرق إليه الشر بوجه من الوجود so شر badness cannot reach can has no way no طريق to reach him in any way فهو خير محض he is simply Uh, good and a simple good. Yaman arjuhu le kull khayr wa amanu sakhatahu in the kull shar. Now you can understand better this sentence. The next thing wal hikmah wujubul wujud implies that God has wisdom. Allah Mahali explains that wisdom can be taken in two different ways. In the sense of a kind of knowledge or in the sense of making things in the best way with maximum etqan, maximum firmness and you know best design, best order. In both senses Allah has wisdom. قال والحكمة أقول اللهم هلي سيد وجوب الوجود يقتضي وصف الله تعالى بالحكمة necessity of being implies that Allah is characterized by حكمة wisdom why لأن الحكمة قد يعنى بها معرفة الأشياء because sometimes by حكمة it is meant to know things. You know, we have hikmata nazari, hikmata amali, theoretical wisdom, practical wisdom. It's a kind of knowledge. Knowledge of what exists, knowledge of what has to be done. Uh, and then hikmata nazari was, you know, classified and divided into uh, philosophy, for example, mathematics, physics, hikmata amali, to akhlaq. Ethics, siyasa, politics, tadbir al-manzal, house management. So all of them are part of knowledge. So hikmah, sometimes it is meant ma'rifatu al-ashya, knowing things. وَقَدْ يُرَادُ بِهَا صُدُورُ الشَّيْءِ عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الْأَكْمَلِ But sometimes we mean by hikmah that things are issued from this person in the best way, in the most perfect way. Hakim is the one who does things in the best way. Wala irfan. In both cases, Allah has wisdom. There is no ma'rifa more than his ma'rifa, and there is no action better than his actions. La irfan. Akmal min irfan. There is no ma'rifa, there is no understanding, no knowledge. More perfect than his knowledge. Irfane means his knowledge. فَهُوَ حَكِيمٌ بِالْمَعْنَ الْأَوَّلِ So in the first sense, he is Hakim. وَأَيْذًا فَإِنَّ أَفْعَالَهُ تَعَالَى فِي غَايَةِ الْإِحْكَامِ وَالْإِتْقَانِ وَالنَّهَايَةِ الْكَمَالِ His actions are in, with the utmost إِحْكَام إِحْكَام means to be firm. There is no gap, nothing loose there. Itqan, again the same. You remember this hadith, Rasulullah said, when he was very carefully putting the uh, lahad of the one of his companions, I think was Ma'ad, if I'm not mistaken. And someone said, you know, Rasulullah, why you are taking so much care of this? We are going to put, you know, tons of um, soil above it. But Rasulullah said, Allah loves the servant. Something like this, So, means to do things properly. 
و نهای تل کمال الله's actions are in the utmost perfection فهو حکیم بالمعنى الثاني ايضا هيز حکیم with the second in the second sense also الله's actions are the best action ان شاء الله we will talk about it in the section about actions Uh, so we will have more discussion about wisdom because there is no reason why he should do something incomplete something you know with problems knowledge is there power is there actually everything for him is easy nothing is you know easier nothing is more difficult everything is possible and easy and he has all the knowledge so why he should do something uh, which is not perfect what Tajabbur. Of course, perfect means the best possible thing, the most perfect possible thing. If something is not possible, like in this dunya, we cannot have perfection. But Allah's action within these parameters is the perfect. You cannot do better than this. We mean by perfection here. That is the best possible thing that can be done. What Tajabbur. الله سبحانه وتعالى has جباريه و تجبر الله مهلي explains وجوب الوجود يقتضي وصفه تعالى بكونه جبارا necessity of being implies to describe him that he is جبار what does جبار mean means he can compensate For everything he can manage everything and bring them to the best order and condition so he has a power which cannot be stopped or defeated necessity of being implies that Everything is connected to him, related to him. فَهُوَ يَجْبُرُ مَا بِالْقُوَّةِ بِالْفِعْلِ وَالْتَكْمِلِ If there is any potentiality, Allah does jubran. Allah compensates. means Allah brings that potentiality into actuality, into perfection. If a student is growing, if a flower is growing, and if a child is growing, anything which is potential and then it's becoming better, becomes real, actual, then it's from him. For example, madde, you know madde and sura, matter and form. Madde is that aspect of the thing which is potential, can admit form is the actuality so with form allah makes madda actual fahuwa jabbarun min haythu innahu wajibul wujud so allah is jabbar because he is wajibul wujud and he gives everything the chance and the support for growing wal qahr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qahir and qahar. Wujubul wujud yaqtadhi waswahu ta'ala bekonihi qaharan. Necessity of being uh, implies that Allah is qahar. What does qahar and qahir mean? Qahar is sighe mubalighe for qahir. Bima'na annahu yaqhur al-adama or yaqhur al-adama bil wujud wa tahseed. Allah defeats, Allah is dominant over non-existence with existence, what tahseel and actualization, realization. Nothing can stop him bringing into existence. He is completely dominant and sovereign. Wal qayyumiyya, Allah is qayyim. What is Qayyim? Qayyim is different from Qa'im. Qa'im is standing up or standing like on his feet, for example. Someone is standing. But Qayyim is not only standing on his own feet, also makes other things able to stand. Qa'imun bizaatih. 
But at the same time, muqimun del akhar makes other things also stand. So this is qayyam. Like for example, sometimes I look after myself, but sometimes I am qayyam for the child, for someone who needs my care. أقول وصفه تعالى بكونه واجب الوجود يقتضي وصفه بكونه قيوم. So necessity of being uh, would deserve uh, and it would uh, imply that he is قيوم. What does it mean? بمعنى أنه قائم بذاته ومقيم لغيره. He is standing by its own essence. ومقيم means he is doing إقامة. إقامة means to make something قائم, to make something stand up, to raise something. So he is qa'imun bizate, but muqimun laqire. He makes others stand. Laanna wujub al wujud. Because necessity of being yaqtazi istignahu an ghayre implies that he doesn't need anyone, he's mustaghnim, he doesn't need anything. So means he has qiyam bizat. Huwa ma'ana qiyam hi bizate. So he is self subsistent, he doesn't need anything else. وَيَقْتَزِي اِسْتِنَادَ قَيْرِ Because he's the only wajibul wujud and everything else is contingent. So everything else stands uh, somehow relying on him. Of course, I'm saying standing. It's not that they have you know, legs, you know, but it means they can be there. They can be uh, surviving depending on him. وَيَقْتَزِي اِسْتِنَادَ قَيْرِهِ إِلَيْهِ so, and it implies that everything is connected to him and is relying on him. This is what we mean by being to stand up and establish others. Finally, Khaja says, Ammal yadu wal wajhu wal qidamu wal rahmatu wal karamu wal rida wal takveen فَرَاجِعَةٌ إِلَى مَا تَقَدَّمُ Some theologians from different schools, they have mentioned hand, face, قِدَم, eternity, رحمة, mercy, karam, honor, and رضا, pleasure, تَكْوِين, generation. Khadja says they all go back to the things that we have already discussed. Allah Mahali explains more. He says, "Zahab Abu Hassan Al Ashari ila an Liyad sifatun wara al qudra." Abu Hassan Al Ashari says, "Yad is something more than power. He wanted to make it a new attribute. When we say Yadullah, but we say Yad here stands for power. Al Waj." Sifatan mughayiratan lil wujud. Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari says, Vaj sifatun mughayiratan lil wujud. Vaj is also different from existence. We have to see. Anyway, either goes back to wujud or somehow related to that. For example, you know, we have had some discussion about Vajhullah. And we said it's a way of encountering with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zahaba Abdullah ibn Sa'id. إلا أن القدم صفة مغايرة للبقاء. He said قدم قديم comes from قدم. It's not قدم. قدم means foot, but قدم means etern eternity. We say قديم and باقي are the same. It's eternal. وأن الرحمة والكرم والرضا. عبد الله بن سعيد says. Rahma and karam and reza, mercy and you know generosity or honor and pleasure, sifatun mughayiratun lil irada. These are qualities other than irada, will. But it seems Khaja wants to say they go back to will. They are a kind of will, for example. Wa asbata jama'atun min al hanafiya at takwin sifatan mughayiratan lil qudra. Some of the Hanafi. Although Hanafi is a school in fiqh, but uh, some of them in kalam have also said that takvin is different from power. Takvin means to create, to generate. What tahqiq? But what is the correct view after uh, uh, thorough research? 
is they somehow go back to everything uh, that we have said there is nothing really new maybe there is a consideration there is a way that you mean something but everything goes back to all these qualities that we have already mentioned so alhamdulillah we finished uh, the first section which was about existence of God the second section which was about qualities of God inshallah the third section will start next week about actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah rabbil alameen thank you very much